guys, welcome back to my channel. As you know, I've been gone for a while. You should follow me on Snapchat because I actually talk a lot about kind of what's going on in my day to day and lately what's been completely ruining my life is my eyes. In fact, right now, even looking at these light bulbs, I'm getting kind of scared that they're gonna start like watering and falling apart. So I'm gonna try to get through this as quickly as humanly possible so that doesn't happen. Also, there's a little fly that keeps, I don't know, why he's so obsessed with me, but he won't go away. So anyway, I decided that the next thing I wanted to do here on my channel was kind of do like a beauty basic slash makeup school slash 101 kind of series because I can tell you from personal experience as being a professional makeup artist, every single, and just in general, like talking to people once they find out what I do, Every single time I have a conversation with someone who isn't like in the makeup industry, they always say things like, I love makeup and I wish I could do a smoky eye, but I can't. I love wing eyeliner and I wish I could do it, but I can't. I want to find a better foundation. It always looks terrible. I want my foundation to look good, but I can't. And I don't think it's that you can't. You just don't know where to start. I think that a lot of times here on YouTube, we watch tutorials and there's these gurus and they're just doing everything so flawlessly and it looks so easy and we just don't understand understand that there's a learning curve and it takes lots of practice. So I want you to understand that I'm going to give you kind of the building blocks of how to do whatever it is that you're wanting to do. But the only thing that's going to make you good at it is practice. And a good time to practice is not before you're going to work and you're rushing. You need to practice like when you're bored, when you have nothing to do and you can really dedicate the time to learning what you're doing. Everyone I know is, I, you know, I tell them how to do it and they just think that that's gonna be the thing that's gonna make it click all of a sudden and it's not. It's repetition, you have to practice. So let's get right into what today is. I kind of wanted to do like a eyeshadow 101 video. First step in doing your eyeshadow is going to be learning about brushes because you're only going to be as good as the tools that you're using to apply your product. While I'm explaining this, I want you to bear in mind that I'm talking to you as if I'm assuming you want to do one of two kind of universally flattering popular eyeshadow looks. The first one is a cat eye. A cat eye smoky eye basically means that you have a lighter color on the inner part of your eye and then it goes to a darker color on the outer corner of the eye and you're using your crease color systematically to create that kind of shape. You're creating light to dark which is like a cat eye. Hope that makes sense. Um, I will try to insert some pictures here to show you what I mean by a cat eye so that you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen people do cat eyes more times than you know. That's just what it's called as a cat eye. The kind of look that I'm gonna teach you about is a traditional smoky eye, which to me a traditional smoky eye means that your color goes from darkest to lightest, darkest at the lash line, lightest towards the brow bone, very, pretty much exactly what I have on today. This is more like a traditional smoky eye. You can do either one of these smoky eyes with any color combination your beautiful little heart desires, but the brushes you need to do it and any other eye look for that matter are exactly the same. So once you have these brushes, there's not a look you're not going to be able to bust out. And I'm going to start off by talking about your crease. Your crease is the most important part of your look. I'm not going to go into how to find your crease and how to map it out today. That'll be in the next video, the eyeshadow kind of application video. But your crease is the first place you would traditionally start with your eyeshadow look. Some people start with their brow bone, but I don't, so I'm not gonna teach it that way. I'm gonna teach you how I do it. So you start off with your crease, your upper crease, and we're gonna call this brush number one. Brush number one in your collection of brushes is going to be the fluffiest, biggest brush you have. Now, what I have here in front of me is a MAC 224 and a Sigma E40. They are, for all intents and purposes, the exact same brush. They're both very, very fluffy, and they both are kind of a dome shape at the tip with the most volume of bristles at the base and in the center, and when you use it, it really, if you press it down on your hand, you can see how much it expands. It gets really fluffy. So because this is brush number one, you're going to use this for eyeshadow number one. Eyeshadow number one is typically the lightest color in your eye look. With that being said, your biggest brush will always get the lightest color in your eye look. 
Brush number one goes with eyeshadow number one. I will get into eyeshadow numbers next, but you still get an idea generally of what I mean by how to use this. I think these brushes work on everyone. I've seen tons of people comment on videos and things like that saying that they can't use E40s or 224s. I've used this brush on everyone. Mature skin, Asian eyes, hooded lids, um, people who have really big lids, people who have small lids, people who don't have a defined crease. Like, I've used this on everyone. You can use it. So for example, today in this look, the lightest color I use, and I think I have like one, two, three different colors on my eye today. So eyeshadow number one, the lightest one, was deposited onto my eyelid with this brush working in windshield wiper motions backwards and forwards from side to side because it deposits that color much softer, much more fluffy, and because it is our transition color, we need the rest of our colors to fade into that. So you need this color to be the lightest and the highest in your crease. So brush number one is going to be your, no matter what brushes you decide to go with, the first one you use to apply your first color needs to be the fluffiest. And once again, my recommendations for that are either the Sigma E40 or the MAC 224. If I had to say, I think I like the Sigma E40 better. It's just a little bit more fluffy. So it really puts that color in the crease and makes it really soft and blown out and diffused and perfect. The color you're going to lose in your look is going to be eyeshadow number two. So, as you guessed it, brush number two is what you would use to apply that. Now, when you have on eyeshadow number one, which is your lightest color with your biggest brush, the next brush you're going to use is going to be the second biggest, and that's going to go on the second darkest, or lightest, however you want to look at it, color. So, for example, today I used Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek in my upper crease with this brush, back and forth, back and forth. The next color I went in with was Saddle for MAC, which is darker, but I went in with a smaller brush to put this lower in that crease. Because you're creating a gradient effect on your eye, if you go in and apply color number one with brush number one all over your lid, and you go in with color number two with brush number one as well, you're not going to be layering your colors really. You're just going to be building the same colors on top of each other in the same area, and that does not create depth or dimension on the eye. You need to go in with a little bit smaller of a brush with a little bit darker of a color. My favorite brush number twos are the MAC 217 or the Sigma E25. I have the travel version here. I don't know where my normal size one is, but they're very much so the exact same thing. Um, you could use any brush you wanted for brush number two. Sometimes I use a 286. Sometimes I use an E45. You can use anything you want to get that next color in your crease. It just needs to be smaller than brush number one is. So just to reiterate, brush number one gets eyeshadow number one, which is the lightest color in your look. Brush number two gets eyeshadow number two, which is the second lightest color in your look. Now, understand that in certain looks you might have eight eyeshadows you're going to use, but I would say ballpark you're only going to use three, four, or five. But this applies to you no matter how many eyeshadows you plan on using. You just want to make sure that the lighter the color is, the bigger the brush, and the higher it goes. So like I said, brush number one, we had our eyeshadow went all the way in the upper crease and it blended it out with eyeshadow number one. And then with eyeshadow number two, on brush number two, we went a little bit lower and we worked that into the lower crease. Now for eyeshadow number three, you can use anything you want. Um, I typically like, like to use a pencil brush. I suggest the pencil brush just because if you have one, you can use it for so many things. But um, I like the Sigma E30. Once again, I have the travel size in front of me, so it's a little bit shorter, but it's just a pencil brush. So eyeshadow number three would be even darker than your eyeshadow number two. And that would go, you guessed it, even lower in your eye. My favorite eyeshadow number three brushes are the Sigma Small Tapered E45 and the Sigma Pencil E30. Either one of these will work. Um, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're doing a traditional smoky eye like I did today, since I take the third eyeshadow, the third darkest shadow in the look, all the way from inner corner to outer corner, I prefer the E45 or something like that. But when you're doing a smoky cat eye, like I said before, where it's lighter on the lid and darker on the outer corner, you really just are gonna need to put the depth in the outer corner of the eye. So this works perfect just to kind of poke it in there and make sure it stays in the area you wanna put it in. Because as we've said before, like if you look at our brushes so far that we've talked about, it goes biggest, 
medium, small, extra small. And that's exactly the order they're gonna go in on your eye. Biggest, medium, small, extra small. This is the easiest way I can think to explain it. And bear in mind, the bigger the brush is, the lighter the color in your eyeshadow look you're gonna use. So if you're doing a purple eyeshadow look, the lightest purple would go here, the second darkest here, and the very darkest here. And if it got even darker, it would go here, because this is even smaller. So this is basically all your blending brushes you're going to use. These brushes are used to apply product in kind of a wash of color motion on the lid, but you are going to need a brush to pack color on the lid. You can use one of these two. I mean, these are my favorites, but obviously there's tons of them out there. You don't get too obsessed with any one brand or style I'm talking about. This is the universal truth. I like the MAC. I think this is the 242. I can't read it. The number's rubbed off. I'll have to leave it down below. And I also have the Sigma E55. They're both flat shader brushes and they both work perfectly fine. All you need to do is pack the color on the lid. As you can see right now, I have a really dark brown all over my lid and I did that with a flat brush. It would not behoove me to go in with a fluffy blending brush like this and try to pack this all over the lid. It's not gonna work, it's gonna fall everywhere, it's gonna take forever to build that color. Just get a flat brush, it'll make it so much easier. Not much needs to be said, just have a flat brush on hand, it is absolutely crucial. I always recommend highlighting the brow bone. There's no eyeshadow look in the world that does not benefit from a good brow bone highlight. So for that, I like to use the E46 from Sigma. It's just a really tiny brush. It's a flat, tiny brush. So I can use this to pack some color in the inner corner and on the brow bone. I, I think this is a great brush to have in general. It's not necessary, but I would recommend it. It will make your eyeshadow application a lot faster, a lot smoother. And like I said, you can also use it to put eyeshadow in this inner corner of the eye, which really opens it up and it's very, very beautiful. The brushes I'm gonna talk about are the brushes that I use to do my lower lash line. <laughs> I'm a lower lash line person. I love eyeshadow on the lower lash line. It's actually my favorite part of doing a look. But if you're not the kind of person who thinks you're ever gonna do that, which I think you should try it at least, you probably don't even need to watch this part of the video. But to do my lower lash line, I always use my pencil brush, which is why I was saying before, I guess if you had to pick a brush number three and you can only get one, I would get this one um, because you can use this for your brush number three outer corner color and you can use it to buff out eyeshadow on the lower lash line, which is what I use this for. So this bottom lash line brush almost always gets a little bit of color number two, if you remember, one, two, three. Color number two almost always goes on this brush and then I smoke out my lower lash line with it to make it really, really dark and smoky. And then I go in with more of a com precise condensed liner brush. In this case, um, I would recommend the I would recommend the MAC 208 or the 212. Sigma actually has a version of this 212 brush as well, but I don't like it as much. I feel like it's really, really thick compared to this one. This one's much more thin, so I feel like it gets way closer to my lash line. I just prefer it, it's my favorite. What you could use as an angled brush to do your bottom lash line to kind of get that really dark depth right there by the lash line. You could use an angle brush, it's really up to you. The angle brush is ideal for someone who is trying to get multiple uses out of one brush. Because an angle brush, you can use it to get in that lash line and really darken it up and make it even smokier. You can use this to do eyeliner, some people can do it, I can't personally, I'm kind of amazed by people who can do liquid li or gel liner with this thing. And you can do your brows with it. So this is a really good one-stop shop for that lower lash line brush but I personally prefer to use the MAC 212. Either one of these will work to do your bottom lash line, but I do recommend having a pencil brush because if you just go in with just this one small thin brush and put a dark color here and you don't blend it out with something lighter, I just don't like that look. I think it looks messy, it looks dated, it's not flattering, it doesn't open up the eye, it actually closes it off. Really quickly, I'm gonna reiterate what I just talked about. Watch this as many times as you need to kind of gather what I'm gonna say, and I'll even try to maybe throw some notes down there to try to make it even easier to understand if you have any questions. Also, feel free to leave them below. But just to wrap it all up and come full circle, we learned today that no matter what eyeshadow look you are using, no matter what colors you're going to use, no matter what your eye shape is, these things are universal. Step one, do your crease. Upper crease, lightest color, biggest brush. Upper crease, lightest color, 
biggest breath. I did recommend the 224 or the E40 from Sigma. This is going to go as high up in your crease as you can get it with your lightest color. Then after that, you're gonna go in with eyeshadow brush number two, which also gets eyeshadow number two. And that's gonna go a little bit below in your lower crease with eyeshadow brush number two because we wanna make sure we can still see eyeshadow number one, but eyeshadow two is going to blend into eyeshadow one. And we're going to move down our eyelid in that motion. So it goes big, medium, and then for eyeshadow three, we're going in with eyeshadow brush number three, which is even smaller than these. It's gonna go even lower than these, and it's going to go with an even darker color than these. So if you have, for the most part, let's say your eyeshadow look has six colors, you don't necessarily need six brushes, but you can't do the, all those colors and blend them out with one brush. You need to apply your big brush, little brush rule to your light eyeshadow, dark eyeshadow rule. We also learned that you can use a pencil brush to poke some shadow out in the inner corner and you can use it to buff out the lash line, which I think is a very beautiful look and I think flatters everyone, but you do what you gotta do. And we also learned that you could do your lash line to smoke it out even further, which I also recommend using either an angle brush or a push liner brush. We also learned, last but not least, that to pack color on the lid, you need a flat brush. It needs to be completely flat because otherwise we cannot take a fluffy brush and use it to pack color on the lid. It's just gonna move the product. You're gonna get tons of fallout, it's gonna take forever, and it's not gonna look good. Just get a flat brush. You also learn to highlight that brow. And you can use your flat brush. Like I said, you're gonna just need to be very mindful. You don't want to take this highlighter color all the way down your lid, that's pointless. That's exactly why I recommended the Sigma E46 because it's easy to control, get it right where we want it, and we can also use this to bring light to the inner corner of our eyes. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really excited to kind of do this series and if some of this stuff seems kind of banana sandwich crazy and you don't really know where I'm going with it, wait until the next video where I talk about eyeshadow colors and eyeshadow placement. It will all come full circle and hopefully it will help you guys master your own smoky eyes and hopefully you learned a little bit of something and you enjoyed it. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not and check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Come hang out with me on Snapchat too because like I said, it's so much easier for me to keep you guys up to date with what's going on. And uh, maybe you'll get to know a little bit more. Did I finally get it? <sighs> maybe you'll get to know a little bit more about me. I miss you guys. I'll be back soon. Have an amazing day. I love you more than you will ever know.